In this video, I'm going to explain all the video settings on the Sony PS5 to help you understand them and arrive at the best settings for playing games and watching movies. Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. I have a Sony PS5 hooked up to an LG CX or C10 OLED currently and I'm going to enter the screen and video submenu to explain all these settings here. And the first item is video output information. And this will tell us the resolution and also the color format that the PS5 is outputting from the HDMI port. So this LG CX or C10 is an HDMI 2.1 TV. So the resolution that is being output from the PS5 is currently 2160p at 60 Hertz and also in RGB, which is essentially full 444 chroma. But there are a couple of important information missing from this screen, such as bit depth and also whether the video range is limited or full PC range. So what we're going to do is to summon the secret information bar from the LG CX or C10. And you can see here that some of the information here matches up perfectly with the information given by the PS5 console. But more importantly, we can see that it is currently 12-bit in terms of the bit depth, which is an information that is not given by the video output information. And it is using 32 gigabits per second of HDMI 2.1 bandwidth. So what we're going to do is to keep this free sync information bar, or what I like to call the Easter egg menu up, and we'll go through all these different items. So resolution is self-explanatory. You can select different resolutions of 720p, 1080i, 1080p, and 2160p. And the best is to just leave it on automatic. But you know, if let's say you have a Pioneer Plasma from 2006, and you know you are only kept at a resolution of 720p, then you may want to select 720p. I mean, using a Pioneer Plasma to play PS5 games, that's probably more generation gap there than between Joe Biden and millennials. So if I select 720p, what will happen is that the resolution will go to 720p. And you can see that because the resolution has dropped and the console doesn't need to use so much HDMI bandwidth to send the HDMI signal to the TV, the console is no longer using fixed rate link which is the HDMI signaling method to send the signal to the TV. It is dropping down to the HDMI 2.0 method, which is TMDS or Transition Minimized Differential Signaling. So let's switch it back to automatic because it looks a bit soft in my eyes. And what we're going to do next is to explain and explore the different options in the 4K video transfer rate. So automatic will be sending out full 444 chroma or RGB color format. Whereas if you go to minus one, you can see that the chroma sampling has dropped down to YCBCR422. And it so happens that, you know, once you drop it down, because again, the TV is not asking as much bandwidth from the console, the console is dropping the signaling method from FRL to TMDS as well. And then if we drop it down to minus two, the chroma will drop all the way down to 420. So again, I think the optimal setting for this would be automatic. And I think, you know, the only times that you should use minus one or minus two to drop down the chroma sampling would be if let's say you were using an HDMI cable that was giving you some problems in terms of exhibiting some sparklies on screen or flickering or you are getting screen blackouts but that shouldn't be a problem you know if you are using an ultra high speed HDMI cable which has been certified by the HDMI licensing administrator mm -hmm. such as these ones, you know, I'm using from Zeskit currently. Again, you know, I still haven't got around to posting a review, but the reason is because, you know, I don't think 
a review is really that needed in the sense that all these certified HDMI 2.1 cables, you know, is going to be guaranteed in terms of the 48 gigabits per second throughput. So as long as you buy one on Amazon, you know, as long as you are sure that it is ultra high speed HDMI cable, you scan it using the HDMI certification app yeah. and it passes in terms of the hologram, then you should be good to go. And automatic is generally the option that will give you the highest color fidelity in terms of the chroma sampling. Next, we go to HDR and there are only two options here, automatic and off. And off obviously will switch off the HDR output from the console, but automatic is actually on almost all the time. By that, I mean that let's say if you are actually playing an SDR game, the console will actually be converting it to HDR automatically. And sometimes this may not be desirable for quite a number of reasons actually and if there is enough interest you know i may have to try and hire a sony mastering monitor in and try and demonstrate why converting sdr to hdr you know as far as the games are concerned is not really a good idea especially when it's on all the time so this is I think, you know, something that maybe Sony has to seriously reconsider changing in terms of the implementation. So with automatic, the console is currently forcing HDR output on almost every single app on the console itself, including Netflix, including Disney Plus. So let's say if you are watching an SDR program on Netflix, you know, it will be forced converted to HDR because this HDR setting is on. So I think this setting will be quite important for those of you who wish to enjoy creative intent, you know, in whatever content you play. So let's say if you are watching an SDR show on Netflix, you want to watch in SDR, you have to unfortunately go into the screen here to change this to off. Or let's say if you are playing an SDR game and you are getting a really bad washed out HDR image, come in here and switch HDR off. But, you know, if I have time, you know, I may do a video showing the downsides of forcing HDR on essentially SDR content. And it is important to note that the 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray app, you know, is not subject to this. So SDR Blu-ray will still play through as SDR correctly using the 4K Blu-ray player app on the console. The next thing is adjust HDR and this is actually to do with HDIG or the HDR interest gaming group calibration settings. So for those of you who are not aware, HDIG is a consortium of consumer electronic manufacturers who have come together to try and provide better HDR gameplay experience by aligning the HDR workflow from the game to the console to the TV. And before using the screen, it is very, very important to set your TV to enable HDIG because that will disable all the tone mapping on the TV. So on this LG CX or C10, you need to be in HDR game mode and then go into advanced controls, go into dynamic tone mapping and then select HDIG. You can see I've already selected it because I'm a stickler for accuracy. And the first screen is to set the maximum full frame tone map luminance in the game itself. So just follow the instructions. Again, you know, if there is enough interest, I will do another video measuring the output from all these different levels and tell you how to actually set it for your TV. But you can see here, the whole screen is white and this goes all the way up to 10,000 nits. And basically what the screen is trying to do is to let you tell the console and also the game at what point does your highlight details start clipping, you know, when you display a full white screen. And then the next screen will allow you to set the maximum tone map luminance. This is a 10% window. So this again will tell the game and the console at what luminance level your TV will start clipping will start losing highlight detail. And then the third screen is the minimum tone map luminance. This will allow you to tell the game and the console 
at what level you will start losing shadow detail. So just follow the instructions on screen. But you know, there are some finesse to this and I may again, you know, come up with another video to try and measure all these levels and let you guys know, you know, how to optimize adjusting these HGIG calibration screens, not only on the PS5, but also maybe on the Xbox Series X as well. And then deep color output will allow you to try and select or force 8-bit color. So I think, you know, I've lost the secret Easter egg menu because of too much waffling and I'm going to put it on the top right corner because that's my favorite position. And if I can, yep, get it there. So you can see that currently it is outputting at 12 bit. So if we turn deep color output off, then the console will be forced to output only 8-bit and you can see that you know it has dropped down to 8-bit and because 8-bit requires less HDMI bandwidth than 12-bit so the signaling method also drops down from the HDMI 2.1 signaling method of FRL to the HDMI 2.0 signaling method of TMDS. So there's no reason to switch it off to be honest unless you know you are running into trouble with HDMI cabling issues especially on long runs so I will just keep it at automatic and let's say if you drop it down to 8-bit you know again I forgot to mention this if you drop it down to 8-bit that means that HDR cannot be enabled on the PS5 as well because 8-bit is not a uh, bit depth that HDR should use, you know, HDR usually requires at least 10 bit. And if you drop it to 8 bit, then HDR won't be enabled. And you can see that HDR is off now. So if we enable automatic, and you will need to manually go to the HDR setting, set it to automatic before HDR will be enabled on the console. Last but not least, let's talk about RGB range, which in my opinion is the most confusing setting on this screen and video submenu on the PS5. Limited will ask the console to output its RGB video signal in a limited video range of 16 to 35. I'm using 16 to 35 as an example for 8-bit SDR domain. And if you select full, what the console will be doing is to send out its RGB video signal in a full PC range of 0 to 255, again 0 to 255, are the values that are used for an 8-bit SDR domain. Now, if you select automatic, note that you know there is no change, there is no blanking whatsoever from the console to the display, which means that when you set RGB range to be automatic recommended on the PS5, the default for the UI for any games you play and for all the onboard streaming apps such as Netflix and Disney Plus will all be using RGB range full. You can see that you know there is no change whatsoever and there is no blanking or black screen, you know, unlike if you select limited. So we can establish that automatic if you select it on the PS5, it will default to full for all the UI, the apps, and also the games, except for one app, and I shall talk about that later. So if you use RGB range automatic, and if you use a black level low as some people have been recommending on your TVs, then there will be a severe mismatch in terms of the video range because you know if you use RGB range automatic on a console the console will be sending out 0 to 255 but if you use a black level low or some similar type of nomenclature depending on your brand say HDMI level video then what it means is that the TV will be thinking that you know the signal is actually 16 to 235 so there is a severe mismatch in the video range and therefore you may see a picture with severely crushed shadow detail and it may look more contrasty but it is wrong because you are going to be losing out a lot of shadow detail and another scenario where i see people going wrong is if they use both rgb range full on the console and then set black level to high on the tv or to pc on the tv and 
In theory, that should work because that will mean that the console is outputting 0 to 255 and the TV is treating the signal as 0 to 255. But there is a catch here because I have discovered that the Blu-ray app on the Sony PS5, it is a fantastic app by the way because it respects SDR and HDR differentiation. So SDR Blu-rays will be output as SDR, HDR Blu-rays will be output as HDR and I really commend Sony for sticking to the creative intent from that front. But more importantly, for the purpose of this explanation, is that the Ultra HD Blu-ray app or the Blu-ray app on the PS5 console will always be outputting YCBCR video signal, which means that it is limited. So YCBCR is always a limited video range of 16 to 235. So what happens when you select RGB range full on the console is that even though it is full, for this particular app, it will still be sending out limited. And if your TV is set to black level high, what it will mean is that, you know, the TV is treating this 16 to 235 video signal from a Blu-ray movie as 0 to 255, which means that you will get elevated blacks and expanded range, which will introduce a bit more banding and posterization. So the short answer is that you should leave RGB range as automatic. So what this will mean is that the console will be sending out full for any games, any UI or any movies from the streaming apps but it will be sending out limited for the Blu-ray movies from the Blu-ray app. And the TV, you should also set it to black level auto or a similar nomenclature depending on what TV brand you are using. Because what the TV will do is to detect the signal from the PS5 and apply the appropriate video range or PC range depending on whether the PS5 is sending out a full signal for games or a limited video range for movies. Hopefully that's clear. I mean, to make it even clearer, let me just put here the two scenarios which are totally wrong and you should avoid. So the first scenario is setting automatic on the console and black level low on your TV. That is totally wrong. And the second scenario is setting RGB range as full on the console and then black level as high on the TV and that will be wrong when playing 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray or just even SDR Blu-ray movies. And the best way to do it would be to leave this as automatic recommended on the console and then leave your black level or HDMI input level or whatever name that your manufacturer decides to call it as auto as well. So the TV will automatically detect the signal as whether it is limited 16 to 235 or full 0 to 255 and then apply the appropriate processing to the video signal. Hopefully you have found that useful. If you like to watch some of our videos on HDMI 2.1 or next-gen consoles, I've created a playlist here and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.